Uh, hello, and um, first of all, thank you, uh, Paula, for inviting me here. Um, it has already been very interesting to listening to the previous presentation, and I think uh, there are a lot of uh, similarities and connections that we'll probably we can uh, talk about in the um, discussion. Um, I would like to, to talk about uh, the activity of the Center for Digital Art in the Jessica Cohen neighborhood in Holon. Um, I will try to give a brief, very brief background about the place and then uh, talk about a few, um, uh, let's say, um, directions or principles of our activity in the neighborhood and show you a few examples um, of projects of activities that we did there. Um, the Israel Center for Digital Art um, uh, is, a is an art center that belongs to the city of Holon. It's a, it's a city project. Um, we opened in 2001, um, and uh, last July, in July 2012, we moved to the Jesse Coy neighborhood, which happens to be on the other side of the city. Up until then, we were working on, an, on a separate, on, on another venue. Um, but we, we did a project in the neighborhood already since the beginning of 2010. Um, you can see here, uh, is this working? You can see here the, the um, um, Jesse Cohen, I don't, I, I don't know if you see the name. This is the south part of Holon. Um, Holon is a, is a suburb of Tel Aviv, it's south to Tel Aviv, it's a, it has about 200,000 uh, inhabitants and, and the Jesse Coin is a very small neighborhood. It has about 8,000 people living in it. Um, uh, and um, it was uh, established in the early 50s to, to inhabit um, immigrants who came uh, to Israel after, after the, the war. Um, and for different reasons, it remained uh, an immigration neighborhood. That, that means that every time there was a wave of immigration, uh, let's say in the 50s, then in the 70s and 80s, and uh, later on for, um, in the 90s of uh, former Soviet Union. Um, and up until recent years, the, um, the population in the neighborhood changes. Um, one of the things that um, um, is very uh, clear in the neighborhood, if you see this kind of highway where it's marked 20, that's the main highway, that's the way it looks. Um, uh, that leads to Tel Aviv, and it's, it's going in the, it really cut the neighborhood um, st from the mid-90s. That's the reality of this, of this neighborhood, that it is split with this very, very big highway and also railway in the middle. Um, and um, this is how it looks, it's, it's a few, this kind of very small houses, but and most of it is this kind of um, uh, what you would call council housing of public or public houses in the neighborhood. So the the, um, the immediate um, we were invited to work in this neighborhood in 2010 by the city, uh, and the immediate context was again um, um, linked to the issue of immigration. There was um, um, families originating from Ethiopia that started to go into the neighborhood. This is a process that the city had no control over. It was linked to, to state policies. Um, and um, so the city uh, invited us to work in, in the neighborhood. Um, and clearly the, the, the context is a context of change because you are expected to create a change. Um, and it's very clear that you are a tool um, um, and it's interesting because dealing with issues of, of immigration, of poverty, of all the problems that Jesse Cohen has, I, I guess the city has some better to tools for that. They have a welfare department, they have schools, they have different types of, of, um, of uh, systems that are already there and already working, but uh, still as an art institution that belongs to the city, we were invited uh, to work there. Um, but then again, this invitation is, is, um, um, is, is unclear about what, what change means. I mean, it's clear that you have to create a change, but what is this change? Uh, what is our role in the situation in, uh, in this neighborhood? What, what, what can we do? This is not very clear. Um, and also, I think we have to remember, and I think a lot of the people here will, will agree, that when we talk about change and we are a contemporary art institution, we have to be very modest. 
Um, I think you mentioned it before. We have to be very modest and uh, understand our limits and, uh, and the boundaries. Um, one of the, of the things that we, we realized in a very, very early stage was the gap of expectations. Uh, of course, when you are working, when you are invited by the city, um, and the city has some kind of expectations. Um, uh, once we started working there, when we started discussing um, the possibilities with residents, with other people working in the neighborhood, we, we, there, there is another kind of expectations from us. Uh, the artists that we work with and that we invited to work in the neighborhood also have different expectations. So you find yourself in the middle of um, a mixture of expectations that sometimes contradict uh, each other and you have to constantly question what is your role in this situation, what is your responsibility. Um, the, the, the original intention um, was to, to be there for two years. As I mentioned before, we were not located in the neighborhood. So the, the initial idea was to do a project of two years um, um, and to, to, to finish it and, 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 and uh, not be there after two years. Uh, in reality, it took us about a year to just try and understand, start and understand what should be done, what, what can be our role in this neighborhood. So we realized that no matter what are the plans or let's say the, 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 uh, fund, the funding that the city can provide us, we will stay in the neighborhood. And we started discussing about the possibility or the need for us to move into the neighborhood. And then um, in last July, we were able to move into this building, which is part of three buildings of a former um, uh, primary school. And that was evacuated, and we, we were able to get this building. Um, this, is, this was something that was not planned in advance. It wasn't the intention of the project, but it, it, it somehow, through the process, we, um, it, it became the, the, the right thing to do in a way, to work from, from there. So from this kind of, of um, research process or, or integration into the neighborhood, we, we came out with a few um, um, uh, kind of, of um, um, uh, principles of our work that I would like to, to share with you. Um, one of the things, and um, this is very clear when you are talking about change, and this is also the, the context of this um, uh, meeting today, um, is of course that we cannot do a change on our own. We cannot uh, um, uh, work in isolation, that is artists, curators, or an, or an art center within this situation in a neighborhood such as Jesse Coin. We cannot, we cannot work alone, we, mu we must make alliances. Um, and these alliances should create a kind of a network that basically is already there, because there are already a lot of organizations uh, working there a lot of, of uh, disciplines involved in the neighborhoods. Um, they already work there. So we, we should somehow help this network be more, maybe more active but, or, and, and for sure connect to, to this uh, kind of uh, uh, networks. Not only um, so that it provides us as the art organization coming from the outside and the artists that we work with. So it's not only for, that, for this network to provide us with a smoother entrance into the neighborhood. So it's not, the, the, it's not for that. The idea of this neighborhood is that um, we have to realize that we are really, um, I would say, um, almost meaningless without that. Um, uh, we must have partners. So from very early stages, we started working with um, all the other, I would say, fields of knowledge that are already active there. That is the welfare department of the city and the social workers and the teachers working in the neighborhood and the youth movement which is active in the neighborhood and, um, and different partners. Some of them are um, linked to the city or, gonna, or, or the government um, and some of them are more independent uh, based on residents. Um, and, and start to build this kind of infrastructure that should be continuous, okay? Should be something that we do on a, on a daily basis. Um, um, and it should also be very clear that this kind of, of networking serves not only the artists. So it's, I, despite that, you, you, you know, you, we cannot avoid the situation that we are some kind of outsiders to the neighbors. We are coming outside with our great ideas and, and um, initiatives, um, 
we cannot ignore this, but at the same time, we, we, we must find ways to work with this. And, um, um, and this kind of infrastructure, network of, of um, different disciplines is vital for, for the success of, the, of such processes. And it means that not only the, our partners assist us in, and the artists to produce their projects and activities, but the artists and us also um, assist them. Uh, this means that we are gradually, and this is something that, you know, it's not predefined, but this is something that happens through the working process. We are giving up a bit of, of the boundaries, the professional boundaries that uh, surround us and open them up to influences that are from non-artists. So that means that everything you do, all the curatorial processes that in some cases lead to specific projects and exhibitions, but not only that, all the way we interact with the neighborhood is completely open to input which is not professional. And we know that in many cases for art institutions, art centers such as us and artists, this is a very difficult thing to do because in many cases we would like you know, to have the interaction, to have the information, but when it comes to our project or our work, okay, we want it to be um, kept, let's say, clean or pure as art. And this is something that we, we it, it's a very slow process of, of understanding and, and developing connections and mutual language in which artists and social workers and teachers can work together and influence the, and, and cross the, the disciplines and, and have mutual influence. Um, and, and it's also, you know, it's also linked to the reality that we, we are very carelessly using the, the term community art, but I think whoever worked, and there are a lot of people, I guess, here that are doing community-based projects, they know that the art doesn't really like the community, okay? It, it sees it, and in many cases, as a threat to the, to the, to the um, professional or the pure of art, and the community for sure doesn't like art in many cases it sees it as, as a waste of time or a waste of valuable money that can be used for other purposes that are in many cases much more practical and needed and that's and that's something we have to overcome we have to understand how to cope with um, so in our um, project we established a, a very important for us a very important uh, forum in which we um, we try to meet every three or four weeks with all the partners that is beside the artists that we work with, the social workers and teachers and everybody involved in the neighborhood to talk about what is happening, to basically be able to communicate. Uh, it seems very uh, um, simple and trivial, but it's something that is, has ne never been there before um, and it's really needed. Um, you know, for example, just I was sitting here before the talk and I received an email from one of the social workers we work with and she um, proposed that in the next meeting um, we will discuss the, the issue of um, violence that um, now that it's gradually becoming summer and uh, soon there is going to be um, um, summer holiday and the kids are out of the school and they are in the streets and there is a lot of violence issues. Um, um, and they, they proposed that for the next meeting we are going to discuss this. And this is an interesting um, um, process that's, that is happening because for the first time there is this um, uh, understanding that this kind of forum in which all the different disciplines meet is the right forum to discuss this kind of, of uh, community issues. And I think before we even discuss any kind of specific art project that we are doing in the neighborhood, this might be the most valuable um, role or contribution that us as an art center can, can give to the situation. It's this kind of, we try to call it an ex-disciplinary space or time, which is not there before. And we are maybe the only um, organization that can provide it because unlike all the other partners, we do not come to the neighborhood with a very clear uh, criteria, um, a very clear time, a very clear method, um, um, a very clear uh, set of tools. Um, this is our weakness, but at the same time, this is a very strong asset that we have. So we can, as an organization, provide this needed time and space to meet, to interact, 
to communicate and to, to start and see how this meeting point can really lead into um, a change that can never be achieved if we worked in, iso in an isolation. Um, another thing that um, um, I think an, an art organization can contribute to in, in, in the specific circumstances that we are talking about is also linked to, to a kind of a pre five? Wow. Um, is also linked to um, a kind of um, um, privileged uh, situation that we have as an art organization. And this is the ability to, to network. Okay, what we have here as a conference, this is something that happens in the art world every day. Okay, you have artists coming from different places. They und we understand that we have something to learn from each other. Um, we have the infrastructure that allows us to travel and we can do this kind of thing. And um, I think it's very important to understand that um, despite what you might think about a community-based project, about a neighborhood, and that it is very specific and very local, we are all dealing with neighborhoods that are influenced through local processes, but are also, of course, part of global processes. So in, in, that means that whatever happens in Jesse Cohen is specific, but at the same time, there are so many other neighborhoods with similar, similar processes which are linked to, to global politics and economics. And uh, this means that we also have a lot to learn from each other. So the, the, we joined a network of art organization that is called Cluster, um, um, we, in which are eight art organizations similar to us in scale, working in similar neighborhoods, residential areas in the periphery of big cities, um, in Paris, in London, Stockholm, Ljubljana, Madrid, um, Utrecht, uh, and the purpose of this network is to enable us to do exactly this, to learn from the experience of each other because we understand that there are similarities. But I think the challenge is to see how we manage to use our art networks in favor of our local networks. Because the logic is the same. As much as we as artists and um, um, curators have a lot to learn from each other, it's probably the same for the social workers and teachers and everybody else working in these kind of neighborhoods. Um, I'm sure they can learn from the experience of their colleagues in another neighborhood and they can gain this kind of perspective in which they understand that they are not only dealing with specific local cases, but there, these cases are also global and there is a lot to learn from each other. So I think the challenge that we are trying to face now is to see how we can use again, our privileged position as an art organization uh, in favor of this local network of partners that we work with in the neighborhood. And I'm sure all the other partners and that many of, of um, other art organizations working in, in similar situation neighborhoods already have and try to, to see how we can um, provide this kind of exchange. Um, so this kind of three directions that we're trying to follow, this, this need for, for um, um, alliances, this need for this kind of ex-disciplinary exchanges, and th this need to, to work locally and globally at the same time is something that we're trying to do, and it's the basis for whatever, all the activities and projects that we are doing with artists um, in the neighborhood. Um, how much time do I have? Three minutes. So I'll show just one project um, um, as an example. This is uh, maybe you can switch to the thanks to the website. This is this is one of the earliest projects we did in the neighborhood. It, it's a project by artist Effie and Amir. They are based in Brussels. Um, they they came they approached us with a, a proposition to do a project, which basically. Um, they came for about six weeks to the neighborhood. This is unusual. Usually we, we work with artists for much longer periods of time. We try to work for a year, two years, and maybe longer. But this was a very early stage of the project, and still I want to show it because it, it is, is a good example of what we try to do. And they proposed to, um, to um, ask residents in the neighborhood to invite them to video shoot them while they cook in their kitchen, and, the, and cooking meant in the, in the broadest way possible. It can be a kid coming back from school making a sandwich or something, a very complicated dish. And um, again, through relying on our local network, they managed to, to go into about 40 
people in the neighborhood. And um, basically what they did is that they, they created this, this is online, uh, this is a website that um, sh shows almost 40 videos of people cooking. And of course, cooking was an easy way to discuss other issues such as life in the neighborhood, immigration. It's, a, it's an easy um, um, starting point. So I'll just show you one example. This is the kind of, you can use this website as a very, you know, you can actually look at the recipe and, and use it in a very practical way, but at the same time, you have a, a very intuitive way to, to move from one story to another. So basically, that was the project, and when it ended, we have this website, which is, you know, it's used, and it, it got a lot of, uh, of um, uh, media coverage. So it was, let's say, in artistic terms, it was a very successful art project, and it really, um, uh, created a lot of involvement in the neighborhood and a lot of discussion. Uh, can you move back? Um, but what we also realized through this project in, is that as an, as an immigration neighborhood, there's a very rich um, uh, culinary tradition in the neighborhood, and there's a, a lot of knowledge. So we, we thought of, of see, to see what we can do with this knowledge, and, and what came out of this art project was um, a workshop that is actually still going on in the neighborhood for about 12 or 15 residents that learn how to, they don't learn how to cook, but they learn how to become a cooking collective um, that provides, um, um, you know, provides catering services to, first of all, the city adopted them, so when the city has different um, events, they invite them to do cooking, and, and they, they are able to, to um, make a living. This is for, from one of our openings. They also do, they always do the food. So this is a way to gradually, uh, for this group of people, to use um, a knowledge that they already have uh, in order to create a very small scale, but still um, um, important um, change that allows them to, to, to make a living out of this. Um, so they're still working. And um, I show this because this is one example. I wanted to show another, um, a few more, but we don't have time, for the, for the kind of, of work that artists do and, and to, to link it to, um, to um, our network in the neighborhood because this kind of project could not be done if we were working by ourselves. We, we, we couldn't do it. And, and um, um, the involvement of all our partners there the, the, um, the community center, the, the social workers was crucial for this project. And at the same time, the presence of the artists became crucial for them. Um, and it's interesting to, 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 to see the kind of um, uh, feedback that is given about this kind of, of projects from people coming not from the art field or cultural field um, to understand um, how meaningful it is. Um, so I will conclude with this. Uh, I hope maybe we have some more time in the discussion.